Thank you for the opportunity to talk to you today about the ACS quality improvement course, The Basics. I have no relevant financial disclosures. As surgeons, we seek to provide patient-centered clinical care to our patients. In order to do so, we must acknowledge that quality improvement is an integral component of our day-to-day -day activities. QI involves the systematic evaluation to identify, correct, or prevent problems with the purpose of providing continually improved patient care. Such systematic data collection is in fact now an important, ubiquitous, and increasing component of good clinical practice. Take for example, the following scenario. Your hospital receives your NISQIP semi-annual report only to find that you are in the ninth decile for surgical site infections. Or in other words, your hospital is in need of improvement. Your hospital is likely to implement interventions to reduce SSIs and improve your NISQIP decile. However, what really happens between these two points in time? One might think that it is as simple as throwing the kitchen sink, AKA an SSI bundle at the problem. Although QI does follow a process, it is not always as easy as just implementing an intervention by telling stakeholders that it is the right thing to do for patients. Just like when you interpret an EKG, you need to follow the same steps every time in order to not miss any findings, you need to follow the same steps every time in QI. Skipping steps such as by jumping directly to implementing a solution is likely to result in failure or may prevent optimal results. Here is a generic 10-step model that is described in the second edition of the Quality Toolbox by Nancy Tag. Furthermore, we know that process is not enough. Depicted here is the idea of a learning healthcare system where quality, safety, and value are ensured through continuous learning, discovery, and innovation occurring during the delivery of care. As noted in the diagram, this type of health system can only occur in a setting where there is continuous learning culture, leadership, and incentives aligned to reward high value care. Additionally, not depicted here, another key component of ensuring high quality care is capture of data that can be utilized at the point of care. As already illustrated by the example given earlier, the American College of Surgeons has already sought to fill the need for reliable risk-adjusted data by developing the National Surgical Quality Improvement Program. The Quality Verification Program, which will be discussed by Dr. Clifford Coe, was designed to inform institutions about the standards necessary to deliver high-quality, safe care. Adherence to these standards ensure that the leadership and the culture are conducive to patient safety and optimal patient care. But what addresses the gap in knowledge or experience that may exist with regards to understanding of the process? The purpose of the ACS Quality Improvement Course, The Basics, is to provide a quality improvement educational course for practitioners, including surgeons, trainees, residency program directors, and anyone else who is in a role that involves performing or overseeing quality improvement efforts. There are six modules in the course. Introduction to QI, the QI process, data measurement and analysis, change management, patient safety, and the QI team. The main ideas of each of the six modules were reviewed in the QI Basics conference sessions at the Quality and Safety Virtual Conference this past summer. Here you see a little bit more detail about the modules. The first module is an introduction to quality improvement. The module goes into more depth about the rationale for investing in improving quality of care as well as reviews the fundamental concepts we need to have productive discussions around quality at our hospitals. It also talks about the six domains that comprise quality, the meaning of safety and of value, and describes the three-part Donabedian model for evaluating care. In the second module, participants will explore some possible answers to the question of how quality improvement happens. The course provides a review of a generic quality improvement process, Additionally, participants will be introduced to three of the major approaches to quality improvement, Six Sigma, Lean, and the Model for Improvement. Additionally, par participants will go through the typical steps of a quality improvement project in more detail. The second module includes the first steps, such as how to identify and prioritize a project, as well as how to engage stakeholders necessary for the project's success. The third module of the course, is all about the role of data in a quality improvement project. Participants will learn about the initial stages of a project where data are used to assess the current state and to identify root causes. 
There is also an overview of some of the most useful types of tools for data visualization and analysis. The fourth module focuses on the stages of the quality improvement project in which we implement changes, monitor results, and standardize those changes across an organization. Participants will review common types of implementation strategies that help to promote uptake of quality improvement interventions and also learn common frameworks for understanding the process of change. They will also review common types of challenges that arise when implementing change, as well as how to overcome those challenges. The fifth module is an in-depth look at patient safety. Improving and ensuring patient safety should be a primary aim of our quality improvement initiatives. Participants will learn how to define patient safety and common methods of measuring safety. The module also reviews concepts and frameworks for how an organization can be structured to ensure a high degree of patient safety, such as the characteristics of a high reliability organization. The final module looks more closely at teamwork and leadership. Participants will learn the essential roles that should be represented on a quality improvement project team, the traits and behaviors of effective teams and leaders, as well as the traits and behaviors of dysfunctional teams and ineffective leaders. Additionally, they will learn strategies for helping teams and individuals to improve their teamwork and leadership skill sets. Since we are hoping to reach a wide audience, we are providing the course in multiple formats. The course will be available as a self-paced online course starting November 1st. The online course is an interactive learning experience. This means that there will not only be text to read, rather, the more that participants interact with the content, use the knowledge check questions and workbook, and apply the content to their local QI activities, the more that they will get out of it. There will also be a nine month instructor led version of the course where participants complete a quality improvement project concurrently with the course. This will be the most interactive version of the course. Participants will be able to come together to discuss their projects in real time as they progress. This version of the course is expected to roll out in less than a year at the next quality and safety conference. Lastly, there will be a one day workshop that will also roll out next year. As mentioned, one of the resources that is available to course participants is the Quality Improvement Workbook. The workbook is available for download at the beginning of each module. There are six sections, one for each session and course module. The questions in the workbook will help the participants to connect the content in the course to, the local, to their local individual context. The questions are designed for an audience that may be either concurrently conducting a quality improvement project, has completed one in the past, or is interested in conducting one in the future. There will also be a multiple choice exam to allow course participants to test their knowledge. A certificate of completion will be provided for successful completion of the course and exam. An additional certificate will be provided for completion of an accompanying project. More detailed information will be released soon. Please email any questions you may have to this address. Thank you for your attention and your interest.